You can't mm-hmm. just have the same top 10 beat pork tracks from every single DJ all night long because mm-hmm. the, the crowd don't want to hear that. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the night needs to be crafted, which is why more often than not, I play the first set myself. You yeah. know, it, it's got to be, the tone has got to be set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a massive, a massive thing you brought up there because uh, I've been to some events and people get on the first set and they're like, boom, 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 boom. I'm Mate, like, I've oh, had, as, man. As, as, when, I've, when I've headlined clubs and I've gone in there, the DJ before me is crashing out like one, two, six, one, two, seven, you know, banging tech house music. And I'm like, mm-hmm. even my set, and I'm playing at like one or two o'clock as the headliner, I want to start somewhere. So my set's got somewhere to go. Where well, am yeah. I going to follow you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you doing? You, there's so many DJs that don't understand the art of a good warm up, but I guess yeah. that I guess it comes with experience. For sure, it does. Yeah, and like you said, um, in a uh, you know doing the promotion side, like you said, I think it's a good idea for people who are looking to start bringing their own brand in. Is that you speak to the DJs before the event? I always so they, do. I speak do you know to them. I mean? expect, so... I tell them what time I'd expect to book them. I I will tell them what I expect them to bring with bring their bloody mates. Bring you know bring people otherwise this night ain't gonna happen yeah. i want them to be on it i don't want them to be playing anywhere else that weekend I want, are you on board or are you or you're not do you know what yeah. i mean i don't tell them they can't play for anybody else but you know i do have expectations because yeah. as, I, as i've said a few times there are a million djs out there now and there's another one right behind you do you know what i mean yeah. so yeah, yeah. take this opportunity and work with me as the promoter yeah i know i think that's good that you brought it up because in you know it's going to um whoever wants to start an event and watch this sort of thing and start their own brand yeah. they you know instead of just booking djs like actually talking to them being like look oh, this is how i want it to go this yeah is build a little team build a little yeah. team of residents yeah, yeah. that's the way forward you know but but if you haven't put on any events you're not really in a position to start you know barking at djs and telling them what they what they got to do but just mm-hmm. you know just be surround yourself with like-minded people and you know share the wealth yeah, mate, that's, that's great, great, um, great, great advice. Because, like I said, I want to pick your brain with a lot of stuff uh, that would be a very lot of useful. DJs, to well, they all, I mean, because everything's so quick now, everything's so instant, they want to just, you know, uh, they just, they are running marathons before they, they've even started walking. You yeah. know, they really are. They're in, they're, all of a sudden, they're making tunes, they're, they're promoting nights and they're DJing within. That's all great, but you've only been doing this since lockdown. And now, what yeah. are you thinking? Do you know what I mean? Yes, you do yeah. need to be relevant and make tracks and be out there, but learn your craft first. Either do one thing or another. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know I do all three, but I, I've got the luxury of 30 years behind me to be able to do all three. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, um, I know you, you obviously you produce your own music and one of your latest releases with uh, remixes from Huxley and stuff like yeah. that. So what was your first ever track that you made? What year was well, it? Well, I, um, I always, I mean, I don't, and I'm not going to sit here. I have to have an engineer. I have, I'm, I have the luxury of having friends that are engineers. I have friends that I make music with. Okay. I've got the patience of uh, a three year old. I can't sit in the studio for hours on end. It drives me mad. So yeah. I need, always need people that I can, you know, I'm an ideas man. Okay. I've got samples come, coming out of my ears. I've got ideas for days. But I've always had to work with people, whether it be an engineer or another producer. I think first track of any that did anything really was a track called baby boo um which was on love not money records i remember and that that. Did re- that did really well that was 2013 and that ended yeah. up getting loads of remixes from like as i am sam divine did a remix um a lister real nice there was about six or seven remixes uh, out there they're all on youtube that was a real nice soulfully sort of mellow track that was I've never gone into the studio and come out with the idea that I went in with. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Something di- always different happens as you, as you're creating the track. Um, and, and so I didn't set out to make something so soulful, but it just that's what came out, and mm. um, it did really well. I, yeah, as I say, that was um, 2013, so 11 years ago. Um, but I've always, you know, worked and I've collaborated with really good producers and worked with really good studio engineers yeah, that's wicked mate 2014 is when i, I was set, I, I my first release was 2012 that was an arch 44 
Yeah, I thought, another... thought about, about around about then that sort of time, 2014, yeah. when I had a release on there as well. Yeah, yeah, I released I released on there yeah in 2014 as well, and um, I was well surprised. I got played by Roger Sanchez, Steve Lawler. Brilliant. I was just like, yeah, I was, I was like, fucking hell, like this is a big thing, like you know, and yeah, it's a buzz. Such, yeah, it's such a good feeling. And one yeah. thing I do want to uh, highlight is, um you keep like you mentioned a lot about teamwork and collaboration which i think yeah. we lack a lot of that in the music industry today because a lot of people want to be better than everyone but you've yeah, mentioned a lot with producing dj and branding have a team yeah. in the crew everything and that's I, what it's and all even, about. Over the, even over the years back i've never been averse to, to putting events on with other promoters as well yeah. you know I, back when we you know, first started as we were blowing i would do events with um uh, the select radio guys and um also the red velvet guys in fact uh three weeks ago we hosted the bar uh the 103 bar ministry of sound for select for their night uh radio warriors so i still do work with people but you're yeah. right and that is where the name connected comes from because i love working with people that are on the same wavelength as me usually yeah. they're the same age as me don't get me wrong but <laughs> i do you know i'm 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 of that sort of mind that you know two heads are better than one two brains are better than one just just fresh ideas around and work with people that will work with you um can't do it all on your own no you know? it's, a, it's, it's a lot of work and you know, it, but again like that's where the rave all starts from you know creating like little yeah little uh you know events in the field and parties yeah. and stuff like that you know it's that's what it's all about having a team if you're going to go and attack yeah. this and and think that you're going to work on your own and not work with anybody at any level whether that yeah. is producing promoting or djing you're mad you're not going to get anywhere just by just you know just this is me i'm on my own you're not doing you know i'm not working with a team it doesn't work that way yeah i yeah. In, yeah, like you say teamwork. I think is is lacking in the industry a bit now, and it's good to yeah. hear that it needs that. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad you highlighted yeah. that when in all aspects of your career and like you know the brands, the mm -hmm. DJ career, the producing career, all that sort of stuff. So don't get me wrong. I mean, more time. I am a bit of a bloody control freak, and I do take the lead in these <laughs> in these instances. Yeah, for um, sure. Because, yeah. But I don't ever sort of dominate somebody. But, but you know, if you're to work with me, you're someone that knows me anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't just work with a stranger. You know, or a strange brand, or a strange DJ, or and you know, click. They're always they always turn out that they're friends anyway, so people know me. Um, but yeah, at the moment, as I say, I'm just happy, just doing plodding along, doing my thing, you know. But I think at some points throughout your career, you've got to work with others in this industry to progress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the okay, actually going back to Baby Boo, that's track. My my mate. Uh... I don't know if you remember him. His name was Luke Hall, Lucas or Lucas. And uh, we played in... Um, I'm terrible at names though, to be fair. We played in Lightbox and he played your track. This was years ago. This was probably like, yeah, 10 years ago. And uh, I was like, fuck it. And, and I remember watching you and Johnny Bloom. I used to see Johnny Bloom for the source quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. But that was like, you know, a, a good night for me. You know, I, I liked, yeah. you know, that was the, a cool sound yourself, Johnny. Rob Cocker and you know, um, yeah, Pete Griffith, Grant Nolda, all these guys yeah, that played there, Scott Rosario and Mike Derry, all these people used to, yeah, all good friends you know, of mine. Every single one of those names, yeah, yeah, all great DJs, all great lads. And you know, it was like Paul Neary, another one, and the, all these yeah. guys were like, you know, I, I used to when I was producing, I used to come love watching out, like supporting that local. Do you know what I mean? It yeah, was so brilliant. good to yeah. meet back in the I think there is a click there doing that at the moment. It's just that I'm so old, I don't know any of them. But I think there is, and there will always be, especially when it comes to the Source Bar, you know, it's it's groundbreaking. But at one point, it was the place, wasn't it, in Kent? Oh, people would, mate, people yeah. would flock all over to go to Maidstone. People would come down from London to go clubbing in Maidstone rather than the yeah. other way round. Um yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know now. I don't play there, so I don't know how it is. But we, we had connected in there. That was down to um, Rob Cocker, and he brought us in there. And we, we had, we had Huxley there. We had Jordan. We had, um, we had Sam Devine. We had some big names. We had connected in there probably ten times. Yeah, but yeah. It's, 